today is I, I got to the U.S. about two days ago, and every time I meet an American, these are all non-Muslim Americans, they have this look of fear in their eyes when they find out I'm from Canada. And they're like, you know, we need to come to your country, you know, we need to escape. This is terrible what's happening in our election. And I mean, I have spent the last two days calming all these white non-Muslim um, Americans down and saying, you're going to be okay. You have to have faith in your country. Because even in Canada, even though people all keep talking about our Prime Minister Trudeau and how he's hugging the, what are those animals, panda bears? I always see him, like, all these pictures hugging the animal and talking about, you know, how wonderful he is. But we had a prime minister named Stephen Harper for eight years, and he was very similar to Donald Trump. Does anyone remember him? Yeah, it was a horrible, horrible eight years in Canada. The last federal election we had, just before we elected Trudeau, he passed a law called um, Barbaric Cultural Practices. He wanted to ban bar bar barbaric cultural practices, which was his veiled way of talking about Muslims and Islam. And there was a woman, uh, her name was Zunera. Zunera, can you guys hear me? Okay. And she wore a niqab, and she wanted to become a Canadian citizen. And during the citizen, he would not let her become a Canadian citizen. He actually passed a law that if she wore a niqab during the citizen ceremony, she wouldn't be allowed to become Canadian. The federal government had to overturn the law, and he fought a single woman on this election point. That was what our federal election was based on, was a Muslim woman. And what I noticed was that all these Muslim women who wore niqab suddenly started standing up in Canada and speaking for themselves, and letting people hear what they had to say from their own perspective. And poor Zunera, she started wearing like plaid niqabs and flowery niqabs, trying to make herself seem more and more acceptable to people and less scary. Every time I saw her on TV, she was you know, looking like a forest. <laughs> Right? But the point is she started speaking it. She started saying, you know, I wear a niqab because I believe in it. I have a university education. My husband is against it. I, I feel I have an agency. Speak louder or less loud? Louder. Louder. Can, even louder than that? Yes. Okay. Is, am I, can people hear me at the back? I'm good. No. Sorry, I'm getting feedback. That's why I'm not sure if I should. We can't, go, we can't raise your volume up anymore, but if you just speak louder, we'll lower it, then we'll be all right. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I'll speak louder and lower the volume. Anyway, what I wanted to tell everyone was that every Muslim in Canada stood up. I mean, even I had to go to the parliament and witness against Stephen Harper, against the bill, uh, um, bill C-31, which he was trying to pass against Muslims. And so what it took was the entire community to stand up and fight the Prime Minister, who was already in power and was expected to win a majority in our country. And it meant that all of us had to come out and speak and engage with the media and let people know who we were and what we stood for. And we made alliances with First Nations, you know, with black people, with people of color, and inter, interfaith alliances, and everyone came up and said, if this is how they treat Muslims, then ultimately this is how we're going to be treated. And I remember one Sikh man was saying that because he was trying to um, conquer and divide and say, this is the good minority and that's the bad minority. And one Sikh man said to the Muslims, if he's saying that about you, one day he'll turn around and say that about us. Because if you, if you hate one group, ultimately you hate us all. And it's the same hate. And so as a community, we took that much time and energy to stand up and make alliances and speak in the media and talk to people, and he was defeated. It was actually unexpected. It was incredible that Trudeau was elected. It was not um, actually predicted that he was going to win. And so when I tell people, when they look at me and say, what will we do about Trump? I say, this, you have to do what we did as Canadian Muslims, which is be part of the civil process and engage with everyone around you and make alliances and talk and be one and be unified and speak up. Because I have faith in America. I think America is a very good country and cares deeply about its people. But I think it needs its good people to stand up and tell it what it really is and who its identity is. They need to know that. And I mean, this is who we are as Muslims and we have to stand up for democracy in this country. Anyway, that's my two cents. I felt I had to say that since I've been here, I've been giving this speech to every person that I've been meeting and calming them down and saying, don't worry, everything is gonna be okay. But the real reason I'm here was that a few, a few weeks ago, I got a call from CNN and they told me that a young graduate student at the University of 
Wisconsin Madison had just done a study on measuring racial prejudice. What she had done was she took two sitcoms, Friends, if you guys heard of Friends, they had like six white people, and Little Mosque on the Prairie. And they measured their racial prejudice against Muslims and Islam, then had the two groups, one group watched Friends, one group watched Little Mosque on the Prairie, and then they re-measured their racial prejudice. So, the people who watched Friends, they stayed exactly the same, but the people who watched Little Mosque, it declined measurably. And it was the first study of its kind. What it meant was that as people watch television shows where they have relatable Muslim characters, so when they don't know any Muslims, and those are the only Muslims they come across, it makes a statistical significance in how they feel about Islam and Muslims. And so that leads me to the next point. If we as Muslims want to make a change in Islamophobia and change the way Bill O'Reilly can influence people, then we have to go into the arts in greater numbers. And I know, I did my science degree from the University of Toronto because I was, um, what be the word, brainwashed <laughs> as a child to become a doctor, right? I actually have a four-year science degree from the University of Toronto as proof. But luckily for me, I did terribly in the sciences and my marks were abysmal. And those were the years, those were the days in the early 90s where there's no Caribbean where you could escape to and become a doctor, you know. And that does anything wrong with those Caribbean graduates. <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. But in those days, if you didn't get into your local medical school, that was it, right? And so my mom was like, um, okay, so, because you know, I have a father who's, you know, it's a father's dream to have his daughter become a doctor. And so while he was licking his wounds, Ami was like, we'll get you married, because that's a good plan B, right? <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh my god, I'm going to wind up as a housewife in Karachi, because I literally had no plan B. And the only school still accepting applications was Ryerson Journalism in Toronto. So I went there quickly, you know, I scammed my way in, got a journalism degree, and that's when I realized that I had spent so many years trying to become a doctor. I didn't realize that I had a latent ability to write and talk and, and um, create comedy and make people laugh and tell story. And I thrived in that industry. And we have a system in Canada because, you know, where you're like, there's only 30 million Canadians versus 300 million Americans. Our television um, gets subsumed by American television, right? I'm sure none of you can even mention one Canadian show that you've even heard of other than Little Boss. And so what the Canadian government does is it gives lots of incentives to create art and um, money for filmmakers in terms of grants. So I took advantage of that system and started applying for grants and started making short comedy films to build up my skill level. So by the time I had an opportunity to pitch a TV show, I had done all these comedic short films and I was ready then to make a TV show. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about, is that the time has come now. I know a lot of you guys are applying to go to medical school, but not all of you are going to make it, and you're thinking about your plan B. And I think you would be surprised by how many of you have a latent ability to write and tell story and to go into professions where you can tell our story. Because if we don't tell it, somebody else will, and it's not going to be pretty. And those of you who do make it to medical school, you have a very important job. Like I heard in, have you guys watched the movie Spider-Man? What was his, was it his aunt? What's her name, Martha? Or was that Batman? I think Batman and Superman had the same mother called Martha, right? I watched that movie. Who, who did Sally Fields play? Aunt May. Aunt May. Do you remember what Aunt May said? With great power. Uncle Ben? Okay, sorry. Before he died? Was he dead when he said that? No, it was before he died, right? Okay. With great power comes great responsibility. Did quote that right? Okay, so you know what that means? That means for all of you that make it to medical school, or as I like to say, start printing money in your house, you now have an obligation to become patrons of the art. Because what we need as Muslims is that we need funding for our filmmakers. Because I was funded by the Canadian government so I could compete against American shows, but that's the model that we as Muslims need to start using. We have a wonderful filmmaker here, Omar Reagan, who did American Sharia. Do you guys remember that film? It's fantastic. But the thing is, it costs money and time and energy. And, we, and I know that the Syrians need help. I do. I really do. And I know that massages need to be built. 
But what we also need is we need to fund our filmmakers and our television makers and critical in the next few years. Because these years, things are getting worse. I think um, Brother Malik had phoned me and he said, we are now at 17% in our approval rating, the lowest in American history, and it's only going to get worse. And the powers that are against us are getting stronger. And so we have to stand up and meet this challenge because we're already seeing the violence against Muslims that are happening every day. We know about the Chapel Hill murders. We know about our, you know, our three young Somali men who were killed. These are, these are problems that are happening because of Islamophobia. People take these issues very seriously, and the only way to counteract these issues is through the media, is through the arts, is through telling our own stories in a real substantive way of crossing over into the mainstream and hearing them hear us. And nobody is going to create the art other than the people in this room. So that's my plea to all of you, is to take me very, very seriously, because if we want real change, then we are the people who are going to make it. Thank you.